Okay, y'all ready to talk about Need for Noir? So I'm Shaquana. I am Patrice. And LaCory is on her way. And we are your hosts of the Black Girl Book Club Podcast. The, Club Podcast. the Black Girl Book Club Podcast. <laughs> the Black Girl Book Club Podcast. Hey. hey. <laughs> So tonight, y'all, we're talking about Needful Door. So before we even get Ooh. started, hold on, let's see. Um, I want y'all to put in the chat whether you're on Instagram or you're on um, Facebook, who you with? No. Are you team nor or team, I call her team no needy because that just sound better, like. Team Nor or Team No Needy. So put that in the chat if you either Team Nor or Team No Needy. I'm just gonna start it off by saying- So when you say No Needy, do you mean the wife or? No, no Needy was Nor. Okay. So you I, either Team Nor or basically Team Not Nor, but Team Not Nor didn't sound- Needy or Nor. Yeah. Hey, yay! First time to um joining. Okay, you gotta communicate. You gotta let us know how you feeling out there. So um I want to wait for LaCory. LaCory got a lot to say, y'all. She I gonna think LaCor the Cory is gonna, in the chat. She coming, she's gonna be on five thousand tonight, just so everybody know. And y'all know how she be when she be on five thousand. So um <laughs> y'all put y'all teams in the thing or whatever, and also put in there like how did you feel after you got finished reading this? Like, was you okay or were you not? I was not okay after I got done. I wasn't okay. The ending took me completely out. Like, y'all know that thing when the church lady be rolling on the floor? I was like that when I got finished. I was rolling on the floor with the church lady and it was a mess. And, and I, I'm embarrassed of the way I felt. Well, at first I was just like, wait, what? And I felt like it was a continual, like, what, what? Like it was, <laughs> like it was that. Well, That's how like, I felt. You smooth selling out throughout. Then at the end, she just throwing like she had me. On you. I was on the ropes. Like wait, wait, stop, <laughs> stop. Let me catch my breath. Like like throw the towel in because I need a moment. Okay, so but let me just start by saying that. too that everybody is getting a pass on my end. Okay, y'all, because Dorian is getting a pass. Needy getting a pass. Prague getting a pass. Only people who ain't getting no pass is Lita. And I don't even know. Lita might need one. But Lita and that. I wasn't giving Pride. Pri Pri What's his name? Prague. I wasn't giving him no pass. I'm giving him a pass because, hey, after everything came out, he was right. You know what I'm saying? He didn't go about it the right way, but he was right. Listen. That don't mean he should have right. won. But wait a minute. But Prague wanted to fuck, though. Listen. So if you mad, be mad. Don't be mad and want to fuck. And hey, you on mute, Shaquana. Oh, she must be on IG. So what irritated me was, Prague, I get, this is jumping ahead, I get that he was right and what he thought about her was kind of on point. But then how you still want to hit? He didn't care. It's like, if you don't like me, then don't fuck with me. Go ahead and free yourself. Or no, that's not what Fantasia <laughs> said. She said, if you don't like me, then don't whatever. talk to me. <laughs> or whatever, whatever Fantasia, Fantasia said. said. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's get into it. So we starting off. So the book starts off. Oh, Lord. The book starts off with this young girl and her brother. Okay, somebody said no passes. They said no passes in the chat. Ain't nobody get no pass. Um, with this young girl and her brother, okay? They are in this home. Somebody said they need a part three. They in this house and they are laying on um, mattresses on the floor. Is that right? They're laying on mattresses on the floor. Um, the, the brother, the little boy is saying how hungry he is. Like he is just so hungry. Oh my his God, I'm so touching hungry. his back. His stomach is touching his back. So his sister who is older, I think she's 14 at the time is telling him to be quiet because they're going to get in trouble if he won't be quiet. And so he said, he's saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Like he was having hunger pains. Like I could feel the pains. Like this off the bed. That's how you know that this lady is bad as hell. She just came out the gate, got you like transfixed into this book. So he Corey is going off on you in the chat. I just want to tell you that. She's sick of you in these damn passes. If I could say it, 
I'm gonna say it like her. I'm sick of Shaquana and these damn passes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so she the, the baby is his uh, his stomach is hurting he getting hungry pain so the sister like all right mama sleep so we gonna go on and sneak out or whatever and you know get some get you something to eat but be quiet you gotta be quiet they are you already know what's on the other side if she get up right so you already like dang what's up with the mama so they get up she go find some chef boy some ravioli. Because so some, somebody from a shelter has dropped off several cans. A case. Of, a case. A of case. For now, them the refrigerator to and the cabinets is locked. So the mama is on some other shit. I don't know what's going on with her. But she locking refrigerators and she is locking cabinets. So you like, dang, what's going on? So she find the case of Chef Bordy that just got dropped off from, from somebody. And luckily, it has the pool top. Mm -hmm. where she doesn't have to use the like she doesn't need a can opener mm -hmm. and so um she get the ravioli she get it open the brother make too much noise okay like i'm in this house with them i see the apartment i see everything that's going on so the brother gets loud and it wakes the mama up the mama what, well what the brother does is that he's anxious because he's hungry so she's she's taking her time opening it trying to be quiet mm -hmm. he doesn't get that he just like give me here and dropped the can and it made noise and it woke the mother up. So the mama get up. The mama is a mess, okay? She gets up. She going out. What the fuck y'all doing? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, y'all in here. Y'all want to steal food. So she accusing them of stealing food because they hungry and they want to eat. So she like, oh, y'all want to steal food? Who did it? So neither one of them says anything. And so um, she, you know, the daughter said the older sister takes responsibility for it because she don't want her little brother to get in trouble. She was like, I did it. And she was like, are oh, you hungry? You so hungry, you want to steal food? You finna eat this shit. It and then you thinking, hurt. like, okay, she gonna make her eat the ravioli? Okay, good. No, she made the girl eat the whole damn case of ravioli, y'all. Out the can. Out the can. Okay. No warming so, up or nothing. It's already, so, ravioli is already disgusting. Okay. Warmed up, but it, so at this point, me and Lita about to go to blows. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I'm on her head, right? So Lita's little time in the book was short-lived. <laughs> um, Lucori said it reminds her of Precious Mama. But yeah, because she was like cussing them out and just real mean. So her, Lita time was short-lived. They had a house fire. Quotation mark. And Lita died in the house fire, y'all. Praise God. Okay, she ain't getting no past this out. But she died in the house fire. Okay, we find out what happened with that house fire at the end of the book. So Lita passes. So you already know from jump, this girl got a jacked up childhood. You already know she's psychologically jacked up from dealing with this mama, locking the refrigerator, they not eating, all this and that. So she kind of goes into like some stuff to let you know what kind of childhood they're having and the things that they're going through, but you don't know everything. So boom, we fast forward to today. So she just giving you some background on, okay, this is why she is maybe possibly the way that she is. Okay. So <laughs> oh, wait a minute. So, the one time that you decide not to give a pass, you kill a bitch off. You was like Lita dead. Lita burnt up in the fire. Praise God. Praise God. Lord. Either all not, the way left or all the way right. It ain't no Not you blocking refrigerators and stuff. These kids is hungry. You'll be playing with people no food now. Okay, so fast forward, okay, today, because we got a lot to talk about, y'all, because people, emotions is high about this book, okay, like, it's like some straight stuff going on, okay, so fast forward to today, the young lady who was, oh, no, she ended up moving in with her aunt, thank you, thank you so much, she ended up moving in with her aunt, because her mother passed away, her brother went to go live with his father, so she goes and lives with her aunt. Her aunt is like a breath of fresh air. I was so happy for her, right? But as soon as this uncle entered the motherfucking building, I knew it was going to be some shit. Let me know if you knew. Did you know? Because it's not, because it's not her uncle, first of all. It's her aunt's boyfriend. Her aunt's boyfriend, who not really her uncle, but still. Her auntie boyfriend, as soon as he entered on the scene, as soon Stony. as he seen, seen one, I knew he was on some bullshit just by how he was. He just seemed slimy. So she went to go live with her aunt and um, her aunt takes, 
takes her in with open arms, loves her. She's completely different than her mother. She ain't like in a refrigerator. She's free to eat. But by this time, she don't want to eat nothing because she been starved all her life, basically. So she got They, they eat. live off salsa water. Right. I got me some, y'all. I meant to take a picture of it, but I went and got me some watermelon um, salsa water. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to be like Noah without all the killing and stuff. But anywho, uh -uh. I don't want none of that. You had that. Your so, seltzer and your water. So, okay. I'm right. You feeling me? So the mama, um, the auntie brings her in, you know, but the auntie got this boyfriend who can't keep no job. He on some BS. He feeling less than a man because she working. She treating him bad. Now, I thought that was kind of messed up. Like, if you don't want to be with him, just let him go. Like, but you ain't got to come in here talking to him crazy. And girl, let me see what this nigga up to. And you know what I'm saying? She was like, let me see what this nigga up to. And then with Nora, it was like, hey, niece, I love you. So I just feel like that was kind of jacked up. But anyway, the uncle is there. Or the my auntie boyfriend. I guess I shouldn't call him her uncle because he was a mess. So the auntie boyfriend is there. She goes and stays with her aunt. And this is like, you know, a new beginning for her. Or so she thought. Okay. So fast forward to today. Okay. That was like her past. So fast forward to today. She is on her way to a job interview with her friend. Well, it Rob does. First of all, it introduces her relationship with, um, not with Stoney. What was her boyfriend? Was it Mitch? No, Mitch. Okay, right, right. Mitch is Mitch, Mitch is her man. That's who she, who moved her from right. from California to where they are now. So Mitch uh -huh. moved her there. So it gives an introduction of him, and basically right. he's needy too. He, mm -hmm. you know, he provides for her, but he but he needs her attention. He needs her to affirm him, and he doesn't want her to work. He basically just want her to be at home and waiting on him. She is her. his cum bucket, basically. He wants to fuck her morning, noon, and night. Okay. And That's he want her wanted. home so he could do it. See, he don't want her working or nothing. So the thought of her getting a job just upsets him. Mm-hmm. So when the scene start with today, he they having sex. He think he's breaking her back in, but he's really not. He's not even touching the tip. Okay. So he thinking her break, he breaking her back. She said they're thinking about, I think my edge is getting messed okay. up in this. <laughs> she thinking about anything but the sex. But, that what am having. I finna eat? Okay. So he does that. So then she was like, she has this job interview. And he like, why you gotta get a job? You don't need to be getting a job. You know how them be like that. He was messed up. So he's like, he's afraid that she's gonna leave him to me if she gains some independence because he know that she don't want to be with him. And he knows that she's bigger than him. Right. Like just who she is. I, I, no, I think he knows that she's supposed to be more than what she is with, with him. And right. I think he's addicted to her. The, that Anyway, he, I think he's addicted to her in a way. So he keeps telling her he got her there from California. They in um, New Jersey now. Shout out to Takira. She always writing about New Jersey. But um she he got at her he fixed her tooth because she had a chipped tooth or whatever so he just kind of like degrading her so that she you know that psychological stuff they be trying to do sometimes so she like i'm still going to the job interview we didn't know at the time she was already up on game baby so she was getting to that job interview she didn't give a fuck about what Mitch was talking about her destiny awaited okay her and her friend is the one her friend who is gay is the one who has put her up on this job but we later no, find so out she that she right. she created the whole situation but anyway so her friend is taking her up there and Nora is very good at like I'm nervous what do you think I'm scared do you think that she'll like me or whatever and she was like she's gonna be okay but what you notice when they're going is that her friend is I would I don't in at that point I didn't know it was infatuated with her but her in friend was in love with her too right but I liked Roz at first like I was like really like because she was just you know like you you good like you know because Nora was kind of down on herself you know I'm not you know of high standards or I'm not you know up here and she was like girl you're beautiful you smart you went to school you've been through a lot but you got through it, yada, yada, yada. So I like Roz. I was like, oh, she's a good friend or whatever. So they go into this job interview, y'all. Okay, this went to get real spicy. So they go into this job interview. She's applying for a job to be a nurse. 
right? To take care of this woman who has a brain injury, who was in a car accident, okay? So that was like really sad. And so when she gets to this house, the house is so big and so beautiful and so lavish, okay? It's like, she she already felt small, but like now at this house, she feeling real small and insecure, okay? So, but Ross is still affirming her. Like, girl, you got this. She cool. They cool people. They black. You know, they been through some stuff. They self, they cool. Don't worry. You good. So they get to the house and she goes in, right? And the first person she meet is Corman. Y'all remember that? The little young teenager, she had like an attitude when she came to the door. Like, uh, the, she said the maid is here. Oh. <laughs> The maid is here. So the this 16 year old here. girl yeah. comes to the door and she like, okay, you know, this lady who come to job for the job interview. So then she meets Emmy Lynn. Is that how y'all pronounce her name? Emmy I, Lynn? I, see, I call her Emma Lynn. Emma Lynn. Lynn. Emma uh-huh. Lynn. And Emma Lynn is just this beautiful, somebody um, in one of the groups that I'm in said that Emma Lynn reminded her of Kim Porter, um, Puff Daddies or P. Diddy's. Um, deceased baby mama rest in peace did, so, did somebody compare her to sanai lathan too no sanai was in that book sanai is in the book honey no nobody okay. did, so, sanai didn't need to be compared to nobody because she was already in there but um emily was this beautiful woman really regal and just you know pristine you know so again she getting shrunk smaller and smaller and smaller she already wasn't feeling it then she gets to this house and it's so big and lavish then she meets this beautiful lady who is just like you know all of this and so she goes in for her job interview and this heifer didn't lie and said that she knew I mean that she was a nurse and Emma Lynn was like bitch I know you ain't been no nurse <laughs> <laughs> you she ain't like, you a nurse aid at best you ain't nurse the goddamn <laughs> thing so she has a serious brain injury like it is like life threatening she yeah she yeah she has a closed head brain injury is what i perceive it as and and you know what the thing is that the thing about emily is her she's very perceptive and i think she smelled the bullshit on nor a mile away mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she smelled the bullshit on on emily a mile away and she basically called her on it and was just like if you rise if you don't get to this hell for the hell out of my house. I know she like she said this girl and came up in here and lied in my face about and I'm I'm sick and she come in here lying. <laughs> she about to have me all fucked up. Hey, Lacory. Hey, Lacory. She about to have me all jacked up. I'm over my damn bed over here. So she was like, nah, I'll pass or whatever. So Nor is all uh, like this is where I get a little bit conflicted at in the book because it's like all the stars were aligned basically you know what i'm saying regardless to what you say but anywho so emily was like nah i'll pass you know i'm good on her she just lied right so what happens in between her her and mitch got some stuff going on now she said because she didn't get the job and all this and that the poor place he he want her to be at home to be this stay at home wife mm-hmm. without no real money being involved because <laughs> he broke <laughs> Right. He, he worked at he got he a supervisor at Amazon. Yeah, that's all the Amazon <laughs> workers out there. <laughs> that's what right. him about he that. Yeah, somebody I said he a supervisor. I think he like a night shift lead. But do, yeah. do y'all remember, like, because this is a this is insignificant, but Dorian, when Dorian did meet him, Dorian was like, yeah, don't you have this big corporate position <laughs> at, at a major company? Man, the shots <laughs> were shot. He threw yeah. them shots. He looked, he, and then he, so he looked at Nora like, what you tell him? He said, I don't know what you said. Not only is he not the manager, he's like, I'm the, sh- I'm the shift lead. I'm the shift lead. <laughs> so, no okay. So fast forward two weeks and Emily is having a birthday party, right? Now this lady ain't got no business having no birthday party. Again, another star being aligned, but she ain't got no business having no birthday party, but she has a birthday party, okay? So she have this big lavish birthday party or whatever and she invites Noor. I don't know, why did she invite Noor? I'm mistaken, if I said it right, put it in the chat if I'm wrong. 
Dorian made her hire Noor. Mm-mm. Everybody no. got that mistaken. A lot of Dorian people made mistaken. her hire somebody. Not he her, her have somebody. He just she wanted her to put it in the chat. I, I know I read. No, Doria wanted her, made her hire a nurse. He was like, we need somebody here with you all the time. The mood swings, the headaches, we need you. And then okay. she, and then Rosalind pushed her friend in front of her. But Doria didn't make him, make her. Um, when he said her. I made her hire her, he meant I made her hire a nurse. A person. Not her in particular. Because I read that wrong the first time too. Anywho. So she invites her to her birthday party. So this is like her second chance to make a good impression. Okay. Oh Lord. And then she make an impression. So this is like her second chance to make a good impression. So she comes to the party and during the party, she almost feels her drink on this man. Okay. Somebody but now, but when you hear the end of the book, it's like, oh, that was, that, that was planned. Wait, you don't, but, but see, you don't know if nothing is planned, but so we can't speak to what we don't know yet. So right, we're gonna leave right, it to she right. spilled her drink on so him. So she almost falls and bumps into this man, and he is it's like, God. I mean, he is a guy, base. He is a guy. He is handsome. He is beautiful. Okay, big, strong back. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he smelled good. <laughs> so you know how to pick them. You know where the money is. You know, okay. you know what? And you in the and club his, and his and you scoping niggas out and you know which ones got the money. She knew that was it. That was Dorian it. had that juice and then he had them tailor based slacks on that mm-hmm. gathered she just right. Him up real quick. And, and then, then when he shit. spoke, when he spoke, when he talked to her, it was like huh? it was so eloquently. Oh, he was lifting up off the ground into the earth. When he was like, you fine? You okay? She was like, oh, I'm all right. You know, your shirt. He was like, don't worry about my shirt. I'm good, baby. <laughs> but when she but when she saw him, she couldn't breathe because she was just like, I just saw my husband. Oh, and supposedly. And I was she, like, at this time, I'm like, get him, Nor. Get him. You know, get on him. Yes, yes. Get him, get him, get him. Right. <laughs> she, was da- she was damn near hunching on his leg. Like, okay. My like, damn, she thirsty. <laughs> she thirsty <laughs> as hell. She, she trying to get the hell out of Mitch. I get it though. I ain't judging her. I'm not judging she her. She trying to get the hell out of Mitch house. That's what's okay. wrong. Listen. So she like on him. She trying to make eye contact. She trying to make him look at her. <laughs> she trying to make him have eye contact with her. She didn't got on the dance floor and got the dancing and dirty winding and all kind of stuff to get his attention. I'm like, damn, no, you gonna get him, girl. You and Emily like get this bitch out my. She wasn't down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Emily no, was there. She, she was inside. Yeah, she was inside. Nothing. She was gonna make a grand entrance, but why she was trying to make a grand entrance? He, she has caught Pride's eye and Dorian's eye, and another okay. man's eye who Girl, had a she woman in everybody eye. She, she catches everybody eye because they asked her, "You want to go home with us?" If it ain't you know what, and she was drinking, and Roz was like, "You maybe want to chill out on that drinking a little right, bit." Right, you want a Dorian. job interview? You this this is a job. Out. This ain't no party for you. This is a job interview. Mm-hmm. And exactly. she tell him, tell she tell Rosa, look, I just met my husband. I just met yeah. my forever. The man he of my dreams. That liquid courage. That's the, what that was. The man of my dreams. I just bumped into him, baby, and it's about to be on and popping. So Emily Ann finally comes down to the party. Thanks everybody for coming. You know all of this good stuff. And then um, she steady who goes on the stage. No, they end up having a um, conversation, a little small conversation. He gave her that shrimp when he let her taste the shrimp and she yeah like, but i think that i like think that i can't uh-uh. remember which one came first uh uh-uh, she didn't find out who he was supposedly well she didn't find out who she was until emily ain't going to get on the stage so right. it, it, she get the shrimp first and then emily ain't gets on the stage yes. right so they have a, another interaction after the drink spill and again the sparks is flying like, you know, they just shooting off of both of them. You know, the sparks is flying. They loving on each she other. Like, this point, he want to know who the hell she is. Like, who the fuck is this bitch in my house? No, he was feeling no. her. It wasn't like that, honey. No, 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 no. He was Corey. thinking it. 
you the, look, no, the look that he gave her was, you know, my song. I wanna fuck you. <laughs> but that was, but that was the allure. Was that's what he told Prague. I want to know who she is. That's why I'm talking to her because I never seen her before. How did she get invited to this private party? Mm, okay, okay, Lacory. So she, uh, nah, she knew the whole time. Yeah. So. Um, Emily Ann finally comes down, thanks everybody for coming, and then welcomes up her husband and her children mm-hmm. to the stage. And guess who her husband is? Her husband is Dorian, honey. The man of um Norris Dreams, who she almost who she's been trying to get with all night. So I'm like, in the book, when I'm reading, I'm like, oh shit, it's about to pop off. We cooking with grease now. I was like, yeah, I got excited because I'm like, this when the shit about to go down. So <clears throat> She never got to talk to Emily, and so I don't know how the job interview thing was supposed to go. So you know what? No, it really she never did talk to Emily, and, and I don't know if Emily invite yeah, Emily did invite her, but she, she can't. So they in so Nora ends up going in the house halfway looking for Dorian. She shouldn't have been in there. She shouldn't have mm-hmm. been on the second floor, but she being nosy. Mm-hmm. And, and when she when she goes in there, Emily is in her bedroom, and Emily starts seizing. Probably mm-hmm. because of too much excitement from the party. I think she said she was looking for the bathroom or something. That, so, but, you, but she on the but she on the second floor. Right, so that's anyway, what I'm saying, but she on the second floor looking for a bathroom. So she happened to run and hear Lynn in there seizing, and so she goes in there because well, she does know how to help with that. Because maybe because she got a got a not a degree uh, a certificate. She probably looked it up on YouTube. That's what I do. She did. That's what I. That's what I. So, you know. So came to she. She researched the hell out of this job. She researched well, the hell out of I'm like, low key a doctor everything. too. I'm low key a doctor. But right. anyway, so well, she MD goes. Is a motherfucker. She she goes to the room, goes in the room, and starts helping her. Gets her to open her mouth and mm-hmm. all that. Put the and, scarf in her mouth. And then I want to say Carmen comes and she's scared and all of that. And so by the time she's calming her down, she's cradling her like a baby. This is all by design, but she's cradling her like a baby, rubbing her hair. It's okay. It's okay. So when Dorian walk in and be like, oh, sh-. like he'd see her, but he love his wife. And he, no, he and gets he, instantly upset. Now this one, he like, oh, yeah. no, 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 he doesn't. He, get- no, he was upset because she saw his wife in that position so he mm-hmm. instantly got mad because he knew that emma lynn didn't want nobody to see her like that and mm-hmm. the stranger is seeing her because like- he don't know who she is just no, yet. y'all what made him mad was that carmen was in there and she told carmen it's going to be okay. Your mom is going to be fine. Yeah, that made her mad too, but I, I, I think what Shaquana said was also right. He didn't want people to see his wife like it because emma lynn didn't want to be shown like that. So again, my question is, is this face? Because what are the chances that she would have walked in on this woman? Having I mean, this was playing. Ha- she planned the season? She planned. What are the chances? She saw an opportunity what are the chances? of it. What are no, the chances? She, she was upstairs looking. She wanted to pop into, she wanted, she wanted to bump to into Dorian again. Into him. She wanted him to and be then, and, but she she came upon an opportunity while trying to bump into Dorian. But I'm just saying the stars kept aligning. Like what the are stars the stars wasn't aligning? Been, that bitch what was are plotting. the chances that she would have been back at this party? What are the she chances? Was that she, he didn't invite her there. He was he, plotting. She has a seizure. She helped her with the seizure. Boom. She was so plotting the to get the job. Then she fell in love with the later husband. Wait, no, you it's tell me. Oh, hold on now. Okay. So, okay, I'm asking the people in the chat. Y'all see what me and LaCory said. She's saying no. I'm saying yes. Thank you, Ron. Was it fate? Was it fate at this point? Because all this stuff didn't happen by chance. It had to be fate I mean, that she had a seizure. Right. It had to be fate that she had the seizure. It was happenstance. The bitch is sick. That's what <laughs> was sick. 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 It was too much going on. She's sick. Okay. So uh, yeah, ultimately, day, don't she? Now you know she did position herself under her to hold her like that. She wanted to be found in that way right. exactly. when she Dorian walked in. Job, but she also wanted to stick around Dorian. So, why well, did, so Dorian did not make make her hire him because Dorian was pissed at Noor. He was pissed and and his dick was hired at the same time, I believe. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I think Emma Lynn decided to give her a chance after that situation. Like, okay, she helped me, even though I know she lied on her application. She the must know how to do something. Pretty much sealed, sealed the deal on the job. Right. That's what I'm saying. How, now she got the job because she had the seizure and all this stuff. Okay, so boom. Now she's working at the, that last name, Hill. At the Hill, yeah. At the Hill Manor, y'all. She got the job. She is in this motherfucker. Okay, so she in the house, right? So she is Emma Lynn's nurse, okay? Everybody loves her, okay? Yeah, Emma Lynn loves her. The kids love her. She's developing a relationship with the staff. Everybody just loves her. She is just like a ray of sunshine. Well, she, Because she knows how, now she does know how to be manipulative. And you know what she yeah. does? She's like those women who hang on to stars, like to, 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 to musicians and to athletes. They study people. And so they know what their weaknesses are and how to appeal to them. She knew yeah. that Dorian needed, uh, Emmalyn's dick was bigger than Dorian's. <laughs> So she knew that this man needed somebody to be a woman and be docile and be needy because Emma Lynn didn't need nothing, even with the, the, the brain stuff going on. And so she knew how to appeal to him. The Carmen, the kids, she knew that the kids had been getting ignored. And so what did she do? She started doing a little stuff. Let me help you with your hair. Here's some little. No, lipstick. no, 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 no. Hold on now. Somebody on Instagram said Nor did nothing wrong ever. <laughs> Who else feel like that? Yeah, she fell no, on that man dick by mistake. Nor did anything wrong. You the problem. She, she was you a like. She was a like. So everybody was drawn to her. She didn't necessarily outside of Dorian because I do believe she prayed on him and baby she pounced on his ass. But everybody else was drawn to her. The kid Carmen was drawn to her. <laughs> She okay, I got you. I got you. I'm feeling you. So I get it. She can roll Dorian in. Your kids love me. Your staff likes me. The wife, I took such good care of your wife. She a good nurse too, even though she lied. Even though she lied, she was no, a good you know nurse. Why she she's a good nurse. Good she's good at everything that she does. So you know what? I don't really know how to cook because Dorian knows how to cook. So this shines a light on you and what you know how to do. And oh, this is so good. I never had that. She's very freaking manipulative. She knows how to be what everybody needs. Because mm -hmm. you know what? I like a good massage. I bet you if she was in my house, she would be like, let me get them knots out your back. You know what? <laughs> she knows how to be what everybody needs. So she was exactly what well, Dorian needed. And she knows how to be needy. She knows how to feel be weak. He needed a needy woman. Okay. Emma Lynn needed patience. He knew she knew how to be patient. The kids needed love because their daddy was working that too hard and their mother was never a nurturer type of mother. So she provided them with nurture. I don't know what she did to Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was no, the same no, no, not Mitch. I'm sorry needed, not Mitch I meant Dorian. the security guard okay so let's get into this so with Dorian he was feeling her okay from the party he was feeling her okay listen he was feeling her he wanted her but he was like he loved his wife he was he loved his wife he was loyal you know he was one of them street niggas so he's loyal you know they loyal to a fault so he's loyal to his wife he loved his wife he would never do anything to disrespect her. <laughs> I'm just saying. This at what the book did you read? Listen, this at the beginning. I'm just setting the scene. <laughs> I'm just setting the scene. I'm just setting the scene as to who he was. I'm just setting the scene as to who he was when this first, before the, everything went down. That's who he was no. at first. No, he was not that guy. That's why he was like, you need a fucking nurse because I can't tolerate looking at your ass. He was no. like, because I couldn't stand you before the accident. And no, now I really can't. No, he now, loved now, her. Now, he was loyal to her, but he did not like her. There, you can love somebody mm -hmm. and not like their ass. He did not like Emma Lynn. He did not. He, he did, did not. not. Well, yeah, he loved her. Oh, he didn't really like him. I didn't say he liked her. I said he loved her. That's what I said. He was loyal oh, to her okay. and he loved her. That, that's fair. I'll that's take what that. I said. Okay, so that's who he was before <laughs> everything <laughs> went. Down. Oh, see, you bringing a bitch that you on the phone? Now? Is that really loyalty? <laughs> how you know that's what he did? Put it in the chat if that's real loyalty. Tell, how you know that's what he was doing? Put it in the chat if you gonna let her. Did her? Did her? Did her? Did her? Did her? Did her? 
Who hired her? Put it in the chat if you're gonna let your husband bring another bitch into your house who he's knownly attracted to. Regardless if I wanted her to be my nurse or not. She Emily knew that Noor partner. was Emily underestimated Noor. She knew she that Noor was she attracted. Understand. The hell out of her ass. She under underestimated yeah. her. She knew that Noor was attra attracted to him, but she was used to young women being attracted to him. Mm -hmm. She didn't get this far with Dorian this long by having to worry about that. So that she wasn't worried about. Mm -hmm. She underestimated the appeal that this young girl would have. Okay, to right. Let's get into this real quick. So Noor was a manipulator. I will yeah. say that. Okay. Because she while she in this house, she no, had the I'm going to use what I got to get what I want. Okay. So when she was using what she food. had to get what she wanted. And so she started doing things. She started doing so things. Let's say like, that M used to brag on Dorian's head like she was a dude. <laughs> <laughs> tell Patrice how good my man. I'm not going to do that. So not, Nor, no, wait. So Nor is like sneaking, going by his office all the time. Just like at the party when she was trying to make him look at her and stuff, she's doing the same thing while she's in this house. She's going by his office. She's always bumping into him. She's always trying to find him alone so she can have conversations with him. And that's exactly- She's seeking him out. She saw him out on the balcony too when he was smoking cigars on his side of the house playing music she and that's what thinking. and that's what he needed and he needed her to come and be needy in those moments and so she would give a little bit of herself to make him like let he me, started me, feeling like i want to take care of this girl let me say this so for real for real i wasn't totally feeling nor okay even throughout the book i was like oh why is she doing this and, you walk around and the woman is sick and like all that but I just don't like the fact that y'all trying to do her like this because she can't act him. like this alone, honey, because no, she, she no. was going by the, the office and all this, but who attacked who? You was in the chat, like in our private chat, like if you will get the fuck out this woman house. Right. Yes. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I wasn't even feeling her like that because I'm like, oh, she is doing the most. Okay. So she's trying to creep up on this man. She's steady going by his office. So then they start having conversations out on the patio. And how let does me, an affair start, Shaquana? Let me set it up. She was, only going, she was only going out there to tell him to get her a driver. To get her, to call her car. Was <laughs> an affair start? With a conversation. With a conversation. So they started. But wait a minute, but but somebody just brought Andrea just brought up in the chat that he was already enchanted by her because remember she was in his office and he was watching her on the phone and he was turned on. He was in a meeting with Pride and he was turned on. She was in his chair spinning and he was just enchanted and he kept by her. Watching the video. And he was oh, watching yeah. the video. It was so good, he, But I but believe he knowingly even at that point, left her in her house, left that woman in her house. That's what I'm saying. It was not loyalty. It was no respect involved for Emmeline as her husband. I would prefer you to just kept her as a mistress, took her in some nice apartment in the sky. See, that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what he did, LaCory. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I haven't finished part two. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, because, okay, but wait a minute. Because he did some stuff to her before, because I have never heard anybody describe a woman's clit the way he described hers. I know. I was like, like, oh my God. God. How disrespectful is that? How it was disrespectful. But I was still like hot. But you still came up though, Shaquana. Rhonda said that she was making twenty five hundred dollars a week and needed. He said she said she better call an Uber. She got to go to him for a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rhonda. That was a part clear. of her. That was a part of her package. They offered that to her. She didn't. Hey, they offered it, including Emily. Ann. Okay, y'all. So let's talk about Emily Ann real quick. So, like Lacory and Patrice said, she underestimated um Nor. But did anybody else get the impression that it was almost like I thought the plot twist of the book was going to be Emily knew that she was going to pass away and she brought somebody in to be with her husband and her children. That's what I was thinking the whole time because it seemed like she was just pushing them together. I don't have that shit in me. I'm not setting you up. Mm -hmm. enough. No, mm -hmm. nigga, no. 
I'm not setting you up to fuck somebody else. Nigga, no. Look, as a matter of fact, we're going to buy headstones with our names on them. I die today and you die tomorrow, the day after me. Dog on it. We, we together real bad. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Bad. Fuck okay. bitches. Oh, wait, somebody said me too. They like that too on Instagram. Okay, so I thought that Emma Lynn was like setting them up because she like sending them to the, the pantry together and on trips no, together. She wanted to control their relationship and for how far it was going to go because he has a known pattern of having relations outside their marriage. So if I can control it, if I can keep a thumb, you know, a thumbtack under and when it gets too big, I can pull the rug out. And maybe she so thought that like they would just fuck, control. not that he would fall in love with her. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So I'm going to allow him to play in my face with her because I know, you know, I already knew this going in and I can control the environment. I can control the arrangement. Mm. The ego in that baby. The ego mm-hmm. in that. Emily had a big ego, baby. Do y'all think Emily was attracted, you know, because Emily like women too. Do y'all think Emily yeah, I, I, like I think she did like, I think she did like, no, I, at first I thought she was going to try to fuck on Nor. I did. I did. Did she like her? She like women. Who said she like women? Well, think she had Roz around. I think she was fucking her assistant. Yolanda? Was her sister's name Yolanda? Yep, the the sister was gay. She was fucking Yolanda. Emily was? Yeah. I don't put it past. I ain't got that. No, it was. Do y'all remember? Was she fucking her assistant, Celeste? Carla Carla said, yeah, she liked women. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't put it past her. Oh, it when they eight hundred pages, you can miss something. Okay, somebody said she yes, they feel that she had a crush on North, so she got a crush on North, and, so. and she was having a she had an affair with her assistant. I think her name was Yolanda, but I might have that. Wrong. So she was intrigued by North too. Mm-hmm. That's probably why she invited her back to the birthday party. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So, you know, and then when at first off, and then like that, it was a moment in the room where she felt when Nora said that she described, she she said this was a threesome. So like I feel like it was an intimate moment between the three of us. She was smoking a blunt for Emma Lynn, and he was on the bed holding Emma Lynn. <laughs> they, they was all smoking a blunt. You know why Emma Lynn and Nora was well, she Nora had, had to smoke it. <laughs> so, so look, let me preface this. So Dorian held Emmeline intimately nor smoked the blunt and then she blew <laughs> into Emmeline to get her they was all in that smoke baby they was in that smoke y'all know what people have going on in their house baby because they is in her <laughs> this was some freak shit and to be honest nor wanted Dorian so bad I think she would have went for it too oh yeah Emmeline would have tried it oh yeah she would have went for it oh yeah Okay, but y'all. When they got to the point, because the first thing Dorian ever did to her, we ain't missed nothing before this, right? We done. What y'all? What y'all want us to discuss? We got fifteen. We minutes. done with everything else, right? I think, yeah. <clears throat> well, no, we got till nine. That was the whole point. I was coming on earlier. Okay. So oh, look, I, yeah, okay. So, um. We ain't missing nothing else. Her and Mitch, is they fighting? He he really is, ain't is non existent. Mitch is, is non existent at this point. Now that she in this house. Just she, a chance. As soon as that big fish came along, baby, she was on it. Nigga, Mitch want her to come home. Yeah, and she just like, yeah, he was like, How long you gonna stay over there? She was like, they need I'm me. taking care of Emily. Okay, so no, this is what I wanted to say. Her and Dorian are on this patio. That's what I wanted to say. They're having these intimate conversations, okay? She's telling him about her past. Remember the mama and the food and mm-hmm. the mama dying mm-hmm. and the thing? She's telling him all her her lore. Lore. Right, it's super intimate, right? And so him being the man that he is, he wants he to, he want to feel needed. He want to, you know, he want to fix somebody. He want to help And him. she knows he needs that. Right. Okay. So that's what y'all saying. He, she know he need that. So she's feeding him all of this stuff. My mama did this to me. She crying, baby. She is landing on thick. I was feeling bad for the girl. <laughs> look at look. Can I can I just interject one little thing here? Go ahead. 
they had two other little kids. Who was raising them damn kids? The nanny. They, they had nannies and stuff. They had that nanny. one was on channel. tick. That one was on hey, TikTok every day. I'm YouTube like, channel was raising them kids. Them kids. Then I'm like, oh my goodness. But yeah. anyway, yeah, proceed. It be like that sometimes. Don't be judging them, y'all. Hey, listen. And I know my baby on YouTube right now. Listen, that's what I was about to get ready to say, and I ain't even got no <laughs> nanny. But anywho. So, you know, they having these intimate conversations. So this is where their relationship actually starts on the patio. He would be smoking a cigar. She's smoking cigarettes. Um, they drinking. She's telling him about her past. He starts to tell her about his past that he don't talk about. He don't tell. He don't open up like this to nobody, but he's mm -hmm. opening up like this to her. OK, so now they is in the thick of it, even before anything intimate or physically happens between them. They are in a thick of a relationship, basically, from this intimacy that they're developing um, on this patio. OK, so now Patrice, tell them about what happened. <laughs> so when they finally do. I, I feel like it was a piano involved, but I feel like I'm mixing. It was two a piano. Books. It was a piano involved. I, like I don't see how you mix the piano. I feel like I'm mixing somewhere. two books. It's the same one. I mean, Hold on. He was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be. He went to the library and he was just still in his office. He was actually in the library on this occasion. She goes to the library to escape because nobody goes there. And just so happened, he was in there that night. Again, Why was that there? fake? I don't know. Was that fake, LaCora? I feel like she always knew where Dorian was. Thank you. <laughs> I think she was yeah. all, I don't care how big the house is. When you want something. I know where the fuck you at. I know I where you at. You. So she went to the library because she knew he was in there, right? So I all the while. There, you know, she said she was going for some privacy. That's what she okay, said. all the while, everybody is pushing. And she wanted some privacy. Carry your ass home. That part. In Mitch house? It ain't late enough. He ain't went to work yet. So all the while, everybody pushing up on her, right? So like Mitch want her, Mel, the security guard want her, everybody want her. Okay. Rog want her. Everybody Rog want, want her. Right. Em low key want her. Dorian want her. And you know, I feel like it's feeding her ego too that all these people want her, but this one man don't want me. I no, want to keep on trying. I want to just keep on. I'm gonna keep on wearing them down. She right. knew he wanted her, but she had to fight past his loyalty. Right. What loyalty so, degrees? That's why I said loyalty. We're going to let the bedroom loyalty. translator get to this in one second. So, no, I just really want to. I've never, the way he described her clitoris. Have you all ever heard a clitoris described in that way? I have. Yeah, I've seen one like that's it. That's what I was going to get ready to say. I've seen, seen one like it. Because that. I felt like. I'm gonna just be frank. Go ahead. I felt like her clitoris was a small dick. Damn it. Well, that, that, that's what they say it is. That's what they say it is. It is right. with all of the nerve endings. Right. And, and y'all know what? He loved that shit. He did. He did. He loved yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah. He couldn't get it. He couldn't get enough of her, her of her taste and how it grew mm -hmm. as he stimulated her. She was a damn good prostitute. LaCore oh I had to bring that in there in my moment. The you just the it shade, all up, LaCore. The shade. But he did, but he loved to wrap his uh, no, but the reason it. wait, 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 hold on one second, Patricia. So the reason that I was saying that everybody wanted her was because oh, Emmeline had went to the hospital. That's how this all came about. So Emmeline um had something, she had to be rushed to the hospital, right? She had fell out. She had fell out, right? So he is under all of this stress. Now his wife has been sick for months, like eight months or so. So they not having sex or nothing like that. He got everything. It's an accident, her crazy ass. No. So he um he got this business. He owns this huge cannabis company. Okay. So he's over all of this stuff. He got money, money, money. You know. So he's under a lot of stress, and he's not getting any release. Okay. So she comes into this library okay where he is drinking because he stressed his businesses his wife his kids everything and exactly. she come in there. The, I, the r and the s and the pants right so, so let's be clear dorian does not get a release 
He and, and I'm gonna tell you from the I chat. I think he was very satisfied though. From the chat, yeah. I want oh no, he was very she she fed him. Okay. But Lisa said in the chat that he sucked her little dick like a pacifier. Yeah. He did that did, did not say that. That's what Lisa, Lisa put said in that. There. Lisa said that in the chat. Lisa I'm just reading it. the chat. <laughs> he did not say that. <laughs> I must have ran past that real quick because I don't know if I, that would not deter me on. I would have to go. Yeah, I'm trying to say you went, Andrea. She was home. She, I want to say she had just got home from the hospital because he left Nor after he took off and went and fucked the hell out of Emmeline. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He fucked the hell out of Emmeline when they was out on that back and she was smoking that cigarette when Mitch came. When Mitch came that night, that's when that happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 so okay, she go into the library and he like he upset, he got this real angry streak in him. Mm -hmm. I was like, this nigga's bipolar. Because <laughs> he would just flip and go off on her. So she come he in there. He stressed. And he like, what do you need? Like what you want. But it was like not in a what you want, but like what you want. What you want what do you want like do you what want for me right what do you want from me but he said it like in a real aggressive way like what you want or whatever and she got like you know she would play that little timid oh my gosh she's yelling at me so she turned away to walk out the room because it was like he was being mean to her and he came up behind and so her. of course what do you do wait wait don't don't leave don't leave. Sorry. Hey, and, then, and then you got to play that role. No, no, just let me go. And it's like, no. I got to go. Like, you in a bad head space. It's not going to work out. We're going to end up saying some shit we don't mean. I just want to give you your space. Yeah. And at the same time, her nipples is poking through her shirt. Because she's not going to walk around the house with no panties and no bra on. Hey, so disrespectful. Why would you walk in another woman's house with no bra on? I'm and it's kids, sir. And it's kids, sir. And it's, I remember Emily told her, she said, look, and by the way, kids live here. So you right, might right. Like, I know we have no dress code, but children live here, ma'am. Get your ass dressed. But Nora was like, no, bitch, I'm trying to get your man. <laughs> right. <laughs> bitch, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the boss, bitch. I'm here for the man. I ain't here for your ass. So he hemmed her up on the door. And then he was like, tell me what you want. Like, you need to tell me what you want. Quit being a fucking punk. You need to. And that's when he named. I think that's when he named her needy. He needy. Said, right. He was like, needy. needy. Oh, yes. Know. I was like, yes. Yes. M sisters. Uh, we ain't talked about M sister, but M sister oh, no. told her. Like, why would you call her? Right. From the very beginning. From the very beginning, M sister. Because M was there when she first. M sister mm -hmm. was there when she first came. Yeah. And she was like, no, you don't need this bitch. This ain't it, bitch. She had not let her in your house. But again, that's what I'm saying. Like all this stuff transpired regardless to that. Okay, so that he end up giving her the best head of her life. Okay. Oh, I, I think yeah, it's now. the first time she had an orgasm that, yeah. that no. was given to her by a person. Right. Mm -hmm. So he drunk from her. At this point, like when you start doing okay. stuff like this, okay. I don't know okay. why people yeah. don't know. Like, sir, you about to be hemmed up. Okay. At this point, I don't care how much. I'm rooting for her. Rhonda was rooting for her. I'm rooting for her. I promise I'm not. Rhonda was rooting for her. You know, no, no, Rhonda said, why, no, no, Rhonda said why are we rooting for her? I'm not rooting for her. I'm, I'm not, not rooting for her. I actually Sorry. was not rooting for her, but I was not mad at the situation. Okay, I was disappointed because at the situation. I was not mad because it was a lot of different stuff at play. And like I said, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking Emily is orchestrating all of this, like making it happen. Go ahead. Um, somebody, so let's brought up in the chat, and this is a very good point. Mm -hmm. He knew that he was gonna fuck her from the very beginning. Because she brought up later that he had her screen for STDs, like who. Like I, I had to have a physical for my job. I don't know why they do it, but but I didn't like they didn't screen me for STDs and all that. So he, he said had, he do that with everybody. No, no, no. But you find no, out that he do doesn't that do that. It's a basic physical. He had he her did. screen because he already knew her past because yeah. her had told him. So he had her screen for STDs I and all that. So he not only did he know he was gonna fuck her, he knew that he was gonna fuck her raw. 
Then that was added. He want to make sure, given her past, she didn't have AIDS. You know, she want to make sure you're gonna be around. That she didn't have. That she had a clean bill of health because right, it wasn't clean bill of health. He didn't plan on fucking her with a rubber, and he never did. I, she just he want to make sure you know she wasn't trying to transmit anything that didn't need to be transmitted. And you can take it how you want to take it. Okay, so now they demand of her healthcare profession. And he does feel bad afterwards. He do feel bad. After. He didn't feel bad. He felt bad. He feels like he's losing it. He's been doing too much. He's losing everything. But Emily, who felt bad? Dorian. He didn't feel about bad. what? Dorian felt bad about um. He, felt bad. he was a fire. That's feeling bad. If he felt he had plans on fucking, he was like he he knew he was going. He wasn't didn't never plan on stopping. He didn't. We he dropped from her. He tried a bunch of times. He tried a bunch of times to stop. He was addicted. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. Okay, so he now to stop. he didn't did that, that but before. he did try to distance himself from her after this. Okay, no more passing yourself would be firing her. That's distant, Shavonna. But his her wife, ass is not a nurse, like she said on her application. His before. wife liked her, and she was good with Emily. Emily don't know what the fuck she wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because by this point, Emily, point. they have increased her medication, Thank and Emily you. is sleeping a lot. Thank you. Oh, whatever. He should have took his power of attorney and hired another damn nurse. So I oh, know. What was funny is when, when Mitch came to dinner <laughs> with them fake ass Jeezy's on. <laughs> what, Patrice? Dorian was pissed the whole she time was. he was there. Because I didn't believe so Nora knew brought it. her boyfriend. Emily knew it. Nora brought her boyfriend to um dinner to meet them so that they can have like a double date. No, the kids was there too. Mm -hmm. so she brought her guy friend. I At think this point, Emily thought it would be a good idea, but I think Nora knew that that was because I'm... jealous. Right, right. Nora oh, Emily okay. knew it. So he comes to dinner and they have words like they kind of beefing almost because he don't like Mitch from Nora. But what else was said at this dinner table? With the finances, he talked about uh, Nora eating too much. I don't want a big healthy woman. Uh, are you sure? Because you know, I want to say Dorian had put more food on her plate, and he was like, "Yo, that's third." Everything that he was doing, Dorian, it was like so intimate to me. Like it was mm -hmm. like obvious. In front of his wife. But hold on, hold on, hold on, Shaquana. Remember, Emily is the one who invited Mitch to dinner, so that was another way for her to control the situation to remind Dorian. Yeah, don't be falling in love because she still has a whole man, and I'm gonna show you that she has a man. But she just, she just thought he was a man of substance, and he was a bitch the whole time. <laughs> he, got in there, he said that, yeah, I heard you have a job at a major corporation, <laughs> like he's in leadership. Mm -hmm. He was so mad at Nora. He was like, "What? What did you <laughs> tell her?" So nothing else happened at the table other than that. It was. It seemed like a lot of stuff came out. I felt like it was a lot. Like of she had to attention. go outside. Yeah, they were outside. Break. They were already outside. By the fire Emily came, came for her too at that dinner table because she was asking her, did she believe in God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, with everything you've been through, you still believe in God? And Nora was like, yeah. But I think Emily was trying to make her look bad, but that made mm -hmm. him even more attracted to her. Mm -hmm. by some, her innocence. It was like something about like the way, the innocence that she had and that she was optimistic and, you know, everything mm -hmm. is going to be okay. And I can manifest my life. Go ahead, Patrice. Police um, in the chat, she said, shit, I just lost it. She said again, <laughs> Emily, doggone it. Oh, I lost it. But she said Emily was trying to. Yes, that's it. Emily wants to control the narrative and wasn't even in the same book. You damn right. She that was. is true, police. She that's was, that's she true. She was, she was trying outside. to control it. So she went to the garden to smoke a cigarette because she had a cigarette. Okay, so this was throwing me too. Everybody wanted her. And I could believe that she looked beautiful and that she smelled as good as everybody said. But she oh, smoked that. cigarettes and she had dirty shoes. I'm confused. That was a contradiction. <laughs> but I don't care how many strawberries you bathed in. 
But that part when she went out, she was upset uh, and she needed to go smoke a cigarette. So she went out in the garden and Dorian don't even try to be, he don't even try to hide it. He was like, I'm going to be, uh, I will be right back. I'm going to tell you real quick. No, like, he don't he never check on the kids. Don't never Not check ever. on the damn kids. So he goes out there to the garden. They out there having a moment. Uh, they out there, a moment. He in the garden ready to fuck. But Emma Lynn comes. She was like, hey, are we all right? He was like, oh, oh she said, are just... the kids okay? Are <laughs> the kids okay? And why they holding hands? Bitch, what you holding my husband's hand for, ho? He was helping her up out the grave. <laughs> You are. Uh, Rhonda, I think the beat up shoes, Rhonda mentioned her beat up shoes. I think that that also was for her to keep appearing that way made her needy. Mm-hmm. It made her more needy. It's like this girl is because if she would have started. Because he said that he was like, Emma Lynn, her hair was always done. She was always on Drew 10. Nine. Right. But her, how she old, was, how old was her, uh, she was 25. He was so at 25, you give me $2,500. My first check. I'm I'm flexing like a mug. It was like I'm flex. Look, buy my whole Amazon cart. Well, Give me my well, sheet, nah, my sheet, my, she my Amazon cart, my T Mu, all of that. I'm getting all of that with the first check when I was 25. No, well, but she know. coming from where she came from, living on the street and all that stuff. She wasn't worried about no Amazon. I she was she trying was. to get out of Mitch's house. I That's think her main me. focus was. I, she was saving money, but I believe that keeping all of, like still looking that way, it made her more attractive to him. That's she what she knew what she was him. doing. Now I will say in that case, she knew what she was doing. She wasn't going to get no Amazon card because she knew the Amazon card was coming out her baby. No, the Neiman Marcus card was coming to her. Mm, it was on she the was not, they say she just what what I learned in a book, she wasn't saving to leave Mitch. She was gonna be with Dorian all the time. Right. She wasn't saving to leave Mitch. She so, wasn't in her own apartment. She knew she was gonna end up in that house. So they had their moment out on the on the thing. So they keep having like these little moments. She was telling him some more stuff about her childhood, about how her mama. Used, this when she told him that the mama used to starve her, and that's what made her have to go outside because Mitch had mentioned her weight. Mm-hmm. And that's when she told him about her mom being 600 pounds. And, you know, that's why she don't eat a lot because she don't want to get big like that. And so she like mm-hmm. telling him this stuff and he is just like, he is eating it up. Then he starts to literally, not figuratively, literally spoon feed her. Mm-hmm. My, my wife's nurse, he did. He started putting stuff on her plate. Here, taste this. I'm going to be eating off everybody. Go get fork. that book today, honey. Go get it today. Somebody listening who ain't read it yet, y'all. They said they about to go get go get it today. Don't wait. So now they in the thick of it. So we getting close to the end of book one, right? They had their moment. Mitch ended up. Oh, so she in. Oh, we talk about Raj tried to kiss her. Lord Jesus. Lord, poor Raj. So Raj this when I knew it was something going on when that happened. But go ahead, Shaquan. Okay, so Raj, the friend who got her the job, who was with her, you know, got put in a word from on the job or whatever. They ended up having a conversation one night about something. And no, no, about Dorian. Like she kept like Raj he got so mad when they were over her house making tacos. She got so mad that she keep bringing up Dorian. Dorian this and Dorian that. Oh my gosh, she does this. And he's just so amazing. He's just this. She was like, you're falling in love with him. Like, you have an obsession with this man. Like, why do you keep obsessing over somebody else's husband? Right. Like, you cannot not stop talking about Dorian. So then what Roz was saying was, you'll never have him. He loves his wife. He loves his family. You'll never have him. You need somebody who take me. (laughs) You somebody who really loves you and cares, like somebody who is really into Mm -hmm. you. Roz, she shot her shot. And then Roz came in for the kiss and tried to kiss her. This is the thing that surprised, this is when I started, I didn't, there's no way I could have known what happened at the end. But at this point, I was like, wait a minute. This girl has took every shot thrown at her. So mm-hmm. Mitch and the way he do her body, he took it. She didn't fight Prague off really. She was taking whatever he had. The house, not the housekeeper, but what the security guy, she was taking his advances. I Dorian. Think she liked that part though. Hold on. I think she um, liked him. I think she liked him a little bit. Male. Who, who the security guard guy? Male. 
Mm-hmm. Well, she needed him on her side. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, everybody, yeah. and then even when she talked back about Stoney, she talked about a guy who lived next door to her, a white guy or whatever. Everybody, she never ever pushed anybody off or was like she didn't want their advances. But when Raj tried to kiss her, it's oh hell no, nah, hell. I mean, like, <laughs> what's the difference? Because you didn't took some you shit like off some now, people. Listen. But now Roz did it. And it's all of a sudden you ain't talking like to her for crazy. weeks. You she blocking like her on IG. And I mean, no. y- y'all ain't cool no she more. Like Corey is she not did. following you on this one. You don't get it. No, no like I don't get crazy. it. She didn't have a problem with nobody else taking advantage because of they her. Were dick. It was a piece of dick. She don't like pussy. She like dick. <laughs> Where she come from, you think it was an issue? <laughs> You think it was an issue? Okay, so so now these niggas was damn near raping me. Not this, these girls was, da- I mean, these guys were dang near raping me, but she tried to kiss me and all of a she sudden, and this is a girl crazy. who helped me. This is a girl who helped you. Now, all these right. other niggas was just, just drinking crazy. from you besides Dorian. This, they were using her up. This friend had helped her. She tried to kiss you and oh, you have a, a lot of things no, that she no. for, but pussy ain't one, and pussy wasn't one of them. She yeah, liked it. Okay, but I guess she wasn't into women, but why is it the big problem when these when Pride was damn near raping her? Okay, so okay, so Raj tried to kiss her, y'all, and she like got so offended, like Patrice is saying, and you know, that kind of ended their friendship right there. And I was I was a little hurt by that too, because it seemed like she didn't have anybody in her corner, and she had this one person. That was supposed to be her friend, and now you finna try to fuck her. So it was really like, like you know, because Norton looked. He her. Wait a minute, Celeste. You said Norton like right dick eating. Can you please say more? Okay. So Roz Every did time that. We so, turned around. Roz was giving her looks and giving her weird vibes. She right. knew Roz so wanted she her. Having to defer it back to bitch. I like dick. I don't like pussy. Even if it's even if it's this dick is damn near raping me, that's what I'm for. That's what she yeah. like. That's what she like. Yeah, Patrice, you gonna put a, get us put off the earth? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, Roz, her and Roz kind of had a rift, but then they made amends at one point. Okay, so her and Roz went and had drinks or something, lunch or coffee, and mm-hmm. so they went and had coffee. They got everything, you know. And she's telling her about Dorian. And like you know what, what happened, and all of this stuff. She's this telling her too much. She's telling her about him, whatever, right? So then she goes home. Ross sends her a text message. Now, friends, don't do this, okay? Friends, a text it. message talking about what happened between her and Dorian, and Mitch hit the fucking fan. <laughs> he went. Uh, Ross <laughs> pulled a Joan from the girl from girlfriends. You know how Joan slipped up and left it because you do email. not put that in print. You do you know, not you put, that put that in print. Put that on print or on the voicemail when Joan did. That Somebody said she didn't need Ross no friend. more. So Ross was like, "That is true. That is true." So. Now, um, Rod sent her a text message saying, you know, whatever going on between you and Dar- Dorian, don't worry about it, don't trip, whatever. So Mitch gets her phone, reads the message, and he flips out, end up smacking her in the face. And he smacked the hell out of her because she like, he like across the room. room. He across. It ain't funny, y'all. It's not funny because you she shouldn't have been putting his hands on her, but he did. Smack it her. was funny as fuck. It was not funny. Wait, wait a minute. There was there was there was there was a certain chain of reaction from this. Em, at, when this happened, when he that's smacked why I her, wanted to bring it up. When he smacked her, Emmeline had went to the hospital, but it, but before then, Emmeline had put her out of her house. She uh uh-uh. wait, 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 wait uh-uh. before we even get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he hit yeah, her. Yeah. Dorian had her come up to the hospital. Emmeline's health is going downhill fast. Okay, so she was in the hospital. Oh, again. She's still coherent. She is. That was tripping me out. So. They, she went up to the hospital because Dorian is like, we, he said, we need you, okay? We need you, but really, he I needs I thought you. Carmen was the one who called her. Mm-mm, he did. Okay. After okay. Mitch yep, 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 her, yep, he right. did. Yep. And uh-huh. he was like, we need you. So she goes up to the hospital to be there for him and Emily. And her well, so hear what the doctor off. has to say. You need to hear what the doctor, you need to hear what the doctor has to say. I don't want to relay no messages. You need to know firsthand because you her nurse. You need to hear what the doctor got to say. <laughs> so she goes up there with this swollen face, okay? 
So and she tried to compact it with makeup. <laughs> well, good damn well, she didn't do a good enough job. Again, was it fake? Because now Dory ain't about to go to... It's a domino effect. You know, once the domino start falling, it all start falling into place for Nor. Right. So she gets hit. She goes up to the hospital. Dorian is on 10. But Emma Lynn, again, is like, we got to do something about this situation with the dude. So she's mad about Mitch, even though she kind of know what's going on between Dorian and Noor. So what she's like, Emily want to control the situation. Uh-huh. So she has, she thought Mel was going to take her because Mitch, Mitch was cracking me up. He said, oh, Bess, he said, come get your shit. <laughs> <laughs> he peed on that girl. <laughs> can I tell y'all, I know somebody who went to that too. <laughs> somebody said me and <laughs> Hey, I'm just trying to let y'all know, like, when them stars be aligning, they be aligning, okay? He, he cut up her stuff and peed on it. He that cut was... up her clothes and peed it's on it. all her money. If he want to bitch now. Mitch the bitch, that's what we call him about that. And he took her lockbox. And he took her lockbox. So they go to the house to get her stuff, because this was kind of like a, a defining moment, too. They went to the house to get her stuff, because Mitch had texted her and was like, you need to come get your shit before I put it in the trash. But she went to go get it, and he ended up peeing on it and all that. She's looking for this box. We think if she's looking for the box for the money. That's not why she was looking for that box, okay? So she goes to the house. She's looking for the box. Mitch then took the box, right? Doria, like, don't worry. I got you. You good. So he take, why did he steal Mitch cat? So that's a side note. Mitch had a cat. What man has a cat? I put that in my notation. What grown man got a cat? I ain't never heard of that. That was his name. That was his name. The cat did not like her. Well, right. at that point. Ooh, now that you say that, that cat knew what the fuck was going on. Because that the cat, cat didn't, didn't like the her. cat didn't like her. So they get right. the cat. And she couldn't get her stuff because it was peed on and all that. The box was gone. He took the cat home, right, with his sick wife who had just been in the hospital. You say, you stay in the car. Home. I'm going to be right back. Left, left and took her shopping. In another city. In another city. Not her, whatever she want. But she told him, I don't need this baby. Take me to Tarjay. Take, Tar -Jay. Me, to Tar -Jay. Take, <laughs> Take me to Tarjay. But for real, that was real talk. She like, I ain't got no house. I ain't got no car. I ain't got no business up in these high end stores. Take me to Target, sir. I don't know nothing about none of this shit. Let me go get me a five pack. I of don't want to go to Neiman Marcus. They look at me funny anyway. Take I got these Target. dirty ass shoes. So he took her to Target. And so he's a chef. We haven't talked about this so much stuff in this book. Y'all, if y'all haven't read it, go get me from Nora. But he's a chef. He cooks. His food be so good, tasty. Like she gaining weight and everything because he's uh -huh. eating up. Go ahead. All right. But I think we also need to highlight the nostalgia behind the, the simplicity that Dorian was attracted to with Nor. So that's what we keep saying. Target. So he, he's you. never been, he been in a target since he was fucking on the clock trying to hustle and get some money. And he in there like a kid in a candy store. He's in there like, oh, we got to get this. We got to get this. Right. He's so he's like, oh my gosh, they still sell this? No. Yeah, I need to get this for kids. Right. So they went no, to Target. He's enjoying that part. He's enjoying that about Lisa her. Lisa says she knows and she's playing the needy out of the need. Baby, she <laughs> played out of that needy. So <laughs> they went to Target and then she's like, okay, I want you to go to my favorite restaurant. Since he is chef, I want to see how what you think about this restaurant. The restaurant is and Cheesecake Factory. Let's be clear. The Cheesecake Factory is high end, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you ain't going in the Cheesecake Factory no less than about $75, $100. So let's be clear. It's a real good, fresh, clean food from the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. But this ain't no Applebee's. This ain't no old Charlie's. This, this is nice <laughs> it's a payday if i was a cheesecake factory oh right now so she took him to the cheesecake factory and this was kind of cute again simple like she's really playing into it like she did this shit y'all hey, the, the the cheesecake no factory baby. and target oh that's a good time that's a good right. day. That's a damn good time so she's, a good day. Cheesecake factory. she's getting drunk 
Okay, she getting drunk, y'all. So she, she got only drunk. had one and a half drinks. She a lightweight with her. They were strong. They were strong. So they get in the car and she is just like, you know, thank you so much for everything. And remember what he did on the piano in the library. And she says to him, they have some back and forth. It was really intimate. And again, I will say I was torn at this point. I was because I was feeling the intimacy. I was feeling the love. They seemed like they just clicked. Like, you know, like every like everything. Like for the mission. I wasn't rooting for them, but I could feel the connection. Okay. I wasn't totally oh, against it. I was totally against it. So because it was like so like, I don't know. I was getting the feels when they was in the car and he was telling mm -hmm. her to listen to the music. I even closed my eyes mm -hmm. to Miles Davis and breathing like he was telling her to just breathe and be in the moment. I was being in a moment with him. Did suck his dick in the car? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being, I just make sure I didn't forget the like, yeah. So in all of this, she asked him, can she return the favor? All the while, Emmeline is calling him. That's okay. What the fuck is up with this cat? What are y'all doing? Everything okay? Right. So she uh, performs oral sex on him. And again, remember, he ain't been getting no releases and stuff. And that she like, let this come down my throat. Listen, he was all in 10 toes down in his mug. Well, it was so disgusting. And she kept replaying what Stoney taught her in the back of her mind. And she said, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, because her goal is not when he is sucking her little dick, <laughs> he's he's getting pleasure from it. He he gets as much joy from it as she does. Her her goal is to suck his soul from his body. She want to make his head cave in. She wanna she wanna break his like she wanna she was like you know what when I get. When I get up off this thing, I want him to be addicted to me. So her thing is not about her enjoyment. She wants to make sure that he enjoys it. And so she's giving it, like she turning, like she giving it her all, like her best YouTube class. Okay. She's like, okay, what did I see on Pornhub? Right. What, Stoney, you right. We ain't talked about Stoney, y'all. Y'all got to go read the book if y'all want to know about Stoney, but Stoney did her in. She lived in the shelter, all kinds of stuff. It was a lot that happened in there, but we can't say every little thing. So, okay, boom. So that happened. Emma Lynn was calling them while they was in the car. He texted her like, is everything okay? I'll be home in a minute, yada, yada, yada. So now Emma Lynn suggests that she comes and live with them because now she ain't got nowhere to stay because um, Mitch didn't put her out. So now she ain't got nowhere to stay. So now she's living in their home, but they not having sex. In the same wing as they asked, in the guest room down the home. Right. Where is stuff? So let's wrap this up real quick. This is just part one, you guys. We're not going to finish the thing. Next week is part two. It's a Kira Allen will be here. Anywho, so at the end of part one, um, what did she like? learn from HBO Real Sex? <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> she was when she was on his dick she was taking a test she was like okay i gotta remember everything i learned in all these lessons i'm getting ready to play it all i'm gonna scoop the balls up I'm, I'm gonna play with his scrotum <laughs> she's like i'm doing everything i learned <laughs> listen she aced that test though let me tell you baby because uh, let me tell you she aced that test so at the end of part one Emma Lynn finally, okay, first of all, these, okay, now this, I was like mad. I was mad about this. I probably put something in my this, notation. Yeah. They ended up freaking by the pool at the house. Now, before they stuff had been behind closed doors, okay? Nobody saw anything. Because she taking all these drugs. Oh, she, she went off sleep. on her. He went off on her. He went off on her. So this was his way of making amends with her. Because he would go off on her. Then he had say mm -hmm. sorry. Well, no, no. You he went off on her, and you found out how she got into the accident, how all of that came about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he feels a little guilt about that. And maybe no, he went off on together. her because Emma Lynn asked him if he loved Nor. Mm -hmm. and he was like are you crazy he was like no I don't love her he was she was like yes you do you know I see it you know he they was talking about Corman and she said do you love her and he was like yeah I love her that's my daughter 
but she's not biologically his daughter mm-hmm. and she was like not her nor and he was like are you crazy like i think that medicine got you all jacked up he was like hell no she was like i see it she was like i see the way that you are with her and then nor came into the room and he was like don't you ever walk in our room without no he said when i'm here i got her you ain't got to worry about her or yeah. and then she was like you know nor his guilt made him go off on her and so yeah. she quit yeah. and she, yeah. she, she, didn't quit. she, didn't quit. she was still there she was like i'm finna go stay at a hotel she was I like i'm finna go stay at a hotel I think we need some space yeah i think we need some space and he was like no don't leave and then she was like i'm leaving and then he pushed her out on the patio by the pool and she ended up straddling. No, 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 no. She, le- she walked out the room and told Carmen she finna go get a hotel, but in actuality, she wrote her resignation note and handed it to him. Oh, That's you right. You and right. that floored him when she did and that, that. And that disturbed his soul that she was finna leave. Uh-huh. So that nigga okay. came to that hotel? Uh-uh, and this wasn't the time we came to the hotel. That's in book two. So yeah. then they, he pushed her out onto the patio they freaking on the patio. She gets on him, straddles him, and is grinding on him on the patio and pulled mm-hmm. display for everybody. And the security guard walks out there. Who the security oh. guard? Guess who you're related to? You're related Emily. to Emily. That's her cousin. Mm-hmm. And I ain't talking about no second, third, fourth cousin. I'm talking about we first cousin. We played in Big Mama's backyard together, cousin. Right. But, but you know what? Dorian was so cool. He was like, look, that's on me. I got it. Hold on. No, I got it. Let, let's no, go talk, man. Come on. I got it. Let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go have a word, Mel. So Mel was more mad than he got. To, he got to know her than he was cheating on Emily. Mm. I think that's what he was really ultimately mad about. Because he mm-hmm. was he was enthralled by her too. Mm-hmm. He wanted her. So she didn't say that the answer. hotel and this. I thought this was bold as hell too. You didn't just freak my husband out here caused all these problems which she don't know that emily and know nothing but then you come walking back up in her the next day you didn't want to call off sick or nothing in that little dress she came in there in that little dress that carmen gave her ass dress right so then she comes the ass teeth showing if she breathed wrong moved wrong and then he told her he looked she looked nice in it he's like that look good on you he said, she ain't my daughter. I can't tell her how to dress. How you a nurse say in a in a hoochie dress? <laughs> Listen. She so, was there to not only nurse Emily back to health, but to nurse Dorian back to health. She was nursing him with his pussy. Right. So and she but you know what? He was told to Mel. He was like, Mel, she off limits. Not this one. Not this Find one. Some, look. Find somebody else. Not this one. So he went. So she goes upstairs to do her job. And this is when everything blows up. So Emma Lynn is like having a bad day, you know, because she has a head injury, she would have like mood swings. Mm-hmm. So she's having a bad day, but really it's because she knows that her husband is in love with this girl. But mm-hmm. she still ain't tripping with her. I didn't have no problems with Emma Lynn throughout this whole thing. She, she, she was cool to me. She was a good person to me. But she ended up going off on Noor and was like, leave me alone. I don't want to deal with you right now. Leave. And then Noor was like, why are you treating me like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she just let her have it. I love, oh my gosh, the writing when she was talking about Marilyn Monroe and how they know how to smile and bat their mm-hmm. eyes and be mm-hmm. mean. She wrote the hell out of that, y'all. I can't say everything, but Emily pretty much broke her down to a bitch. I'm still the HPIC. Bitch, I'm seeing this dad and I, but bitch, I'm still in charge. She tried to. Going on. But Nor Nord on her ass, okay? Because she came back like, bitch, you don't even want to know what I got when you be having that stuff in your back pocket. Like, I will hurt your feelings if I tell you everything. <laughs> so Nor was still kind of playing the, the sad little, why are you treating me like this? And so M is still... Emily is like, okay, get out. So then I'm confused. I'm like, I thought Emily was trying to hook them up, but Emily was not trying to hook them up. She was like, get out of my house. I said, you know, bitch, husband. get out my fucking house. Now, take your trash ass back to the projects. Yeah. Right. And so that's how book one ends is Emily knowing that um, they was no, out. And she, she begged. She was like, please, Emily, I'm sorry. 
I'm like, I don't want to leave. Like, and she begged. Emily was like, get, get your ass. We don't ass talk about that next week. Get your ass out my house. She said, get, get your raggedy, raggedy ass out my house. And Nora begged because she didn't want to leave. She needed Dorian. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was sad to me. I, I didn't like Emily and the way she did them kids. That's what hurt my feelings, the way she did the kids. She was I messed like up. It. She was messed up. Not saying it was excuse, but I mean it was her reality. She had a brain injury. She couldn't. She wasn't she herself. Know, she, she acted like that before the brain injury with them damn kids. I don't know. The brain injury. This she was right. a she was a tough cookie. She was from the streets. Her daddy was like the biggest drug dealer, fat cat. I think he's like a real person in real life. But you know, he was like that was her daddy, and so she came from the streets. She was from the hood. That's what her sister said. Like. My sister wouldn't have no bitch up in her while her husband like this. Your head. I believe that, that that Dorian loved and maybe hated that about her. Mm-hmm. I believe that too. And um, I think once the, which we'll never know because there won't be a part three, everyone who's wanting a part three. But I think once the veil is lifted, it's going to be some things that he don't like about Nora either. Like it was all cute and stuff at first, but like, bitch, what are you wearing? Dirty tennis shoes? No. You're my wife now. Put the cigarettes down, like stuff like that. So, anywho, that's he's gonna turn the rags to riches type shit. But I'm gonna tell you why I didn't give Dory in a pass. Okay. So, in addition to, I don't think it was no loyalty or respect involved when it came to Emily. And I understand it was an arrangement, it was understanding in their marriage. I get it, I see it in book one. However, there, where is the respect? Where is the common courtesy to not bring this bitch up in my house and flop her in front of me. Knowing good well, I don't have no defense mechanism. I can't get back and put, you know, get up and put my clothes on and do my makeup and, you know, be flying back. I just felt that was real fucked up of him. I, um... And it was real grimy on Nora's behalf. You in love with this man, you want to be with this man. But you ain't here in my face trying to be all big sister, little sister type shit. What? That was very tight. You know what? What I got out of Dorian and Nor, you know, like he feels like he's in love with her and she's it for him. And he's he don't think he's ever been in love before, you know, now that he's experienced Nor. What I've learned about people, period, is that there's a high involved when you're introducing people to things that are new. So mm-hmm. say, for instance, you're on this level, even if you're a thousand there, but you've got somebody who's lived in the gutter, the projects and all of that, you're introducing them to seafood for the first time. They never really been to a drive-in theater. I'm just saying the basic shit, you know, mm-hmm. but they've never experienced that. I'm not used to having a, a full course meal, having a house with air conditioner. And so you take them on a trip, you take them on a little trip to Aruba and they're like, man, on a private jet, like you're in. Int- some people, I think like Dor- the Dorians of the world, not not and the pussy was sublime, but to introduce her to all of these things and all of these first, it's like a first for him too. And I think people get mm. addicted to that, both men and women. And mm. so, you know, there won't be a book three, but I think a big part of his attraction to her was that she was needy and he was he was able to experience first with her, whereas his wife was on his level at every point and so he never he got that and so is that what you're saying he was a weak uh, man he was a weak man and couldn't handle a strong woman is that what you're no saying? i don't think that he was weak at all but he wanted to be needed and he wanted to be able to show i mean he didn't know that he needed to be needed until he needed he a, wife. a lot of our faves and we've said this before the men are insecure they have those tendencies so they these strong powerful men but in other instances, they have these weaknesses. They, they have these and, and so Nora fed that. And then just to be able to take her to his house and her to look around like, oh, oh, you get it, you get it. there, there's a there's some adrenaline that comes out of that showing somebody those things for the first time. And everything in his life for her was a first. And I believe so. Not only was he having physical orgasms and the physicalness. He was also getting that part, his, her car, his car was amazing to her. Everything, his shoe, everything was amazing. Everything was her first. And so it was like, she was constantly a virgin for him. 
And every time he was breaking her cherry with every little experience. And I think he got off on that. Mm. And so how long can that last? Mm. We'll talk about it next week. Y'all tune in. We're going to be on at 730 again so we can get everything out. We don't want to be rushed or nothing like that. And the Mrs. Takira Allen will be here with us next week. She's not going to be on for the entire time. Uh, we may have her for maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes or so, depending on how the conversation goes, but she will be here. And I want to get her thoughts on like, how these people kind of like, how did you write this story? Cause it was wild. It was a wild story. The last 30 minutes of children. Okay. Okay. I'm on the last 30 minutes. But, but I can say wholeheartedly, even though I did not like the characters, I enjoyed the book. And I feel like our author has done their job if it's evoking all these emotions and these discrepancies. Conversations and, and these like, feelings. Yeah, those people going you. back and forth. I don't know who's not, you know. Get caught up in the monotony of reading books where the main female lead character, you like them, you love them, you're rooting for that character. And then this stands, bitch, I wasn't rooting for Nora at all. And eventually, yes, you can write the fe- the male lead character in an ugly light. And eventually he'll sway back and come back around. And you'll be rooting for him. You'll be rooting for their love, yada, yada, yada. But bitch, I want all their asses to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, the quarry has spoken and we will see oh, can i tell y'all something that's totally um, off course and this won't happen next week but when i tell y'all i'm fangirling about the fact that takira allen is coming on the show like it's gonna take everything i'm gonna have myself together i will be drinking water next week because water. it's gonna take everything in me not to be like can we talk about denny for five hey, minutes I will not do that. we need to talk to them like <laughs> i need you to i need you to slow walk me through denny like because this dude i'm like how did you create a book that made me fall in love with a guy who was nothing short of crazy oh, as hell well. well i'm talking about his crazy was crazy and i love denny like what is and wrong also, with you? Does Nora have some mental health issues? I say in each book she writes, it's a it's a that is not a question, real. honey. That is not a question. That is a fact. Well, she didn't. She didn't say it. That is a fact. Question. We ain't gonna talk. I'll tell you next week. I don't want to give it away right now, but we'll talk about that next week. But it's a fact that she's very. It's a fact. The bitch is crazy. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll talk to y'all. You know what? Crazy people got the best sex. Um, that's what I'm coming to find out. Erica, yeah, the, what LaCory said. That's why Erica, because crazy, look, them crazy people have you. <laughs> crazy people got the best sex. I'm glad I ain't never experienced that. I'm glad I ain't never experienced it either. I don't <laughs> never want to experience no crazy dick, and I don't want to never experience no broke nigga dick, because they say that dick is very addictive. <laughs> and Tyrone can't be on my couch eating Fruit Loops, playing the video games. On my TV, while I'm here, have you looking for him at night? Yeah, <laughs> looking at daytime with a flashlight in the rain. What are we gonna do without her? <laughs> we go miss her. Tyrone uh, gonna be on the couch. I don't know. But, I don't I'm know. Just saying you won't ever have to experience that, little Corey. But I, yeah, I like, don't experience it. I'm gonna send that <laughs> boat dick back over there. No, <laughs> but you know what? These girls be losing their mind over this boat they dick, do. Too. they do. And I'm like, they, oh. look, and be getting dropped off at work in their own car. That's some real that, stuff. that's Jody right there. And, and then when you leave the work, you 